Hello to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club. As you can see, it's raining outside, it's very, very windy. So I've decided to um, do this 5am club from the safety of the warm vehicle that I'm in. And uh, it's only going to get worse because the winds are going to lift to about 90 90 uh, kilometers per hour and uh, the surf is going to be pounding later on this morning so uh, I'm in the car I've had a, a hot chocolate I've got the heater on so I'm very very comfortable so what I want to do today is take you through a book summary entitled bit literacy by Mark Hurst and it's a book which helps put a few things into perspective in terms of how our lives have dramatically changed uh, over the past couple of decades. Uh, because we are inundated by tremendous amounts of uh, distraction. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll step through the arguments that this author, Mark Hurst, puts forward and see if there's something that we can learn, something that we can leverage, and something that we can incorporate into our learnings to help us get through the morning, get through the day, and make the most of the opportunities as and when they present themselves, but at the same time to relieve ourselves of the stresses and the challenges that uh, we face with the rapidly changing social environment that we are involved in. So the author kicks off the book with a quote to help put things into perspective and to whet our appetite for the other beautiful points that are going to come our way. And he says that productivity is measured by the time you spend working on your to-dos but not on organizing them. I remember working for a top tier law firm where the, uh, one of the uh, members of the team thought it was a great idea that we institute a system to record the tasks that we do and to manage the tasks. And I found it so bloody frustrating. It was the bane of my existence that I would spend more time recording the tasks and keeping track of the tasks rather than doing the job and finding fulfillment in the work that I was doing. But that seems to be the way of the future where people, managers can sit back and look at, um, look at their uh, screens and um, identify what people are working on and how much time they're working on it. Um, but I guess, yes, from a productivity perspective, it may have some merit, but from a worker perspective, from a employee's perspective, I just found it as a, a huge step back in time and I didn't enjoy it one iota. So the author then goes on to help us once again putting things, put things into perspective and says that 20 years ago, as, as, as long as 20 years ago, you could count the sources of information on one hand. So in terms of the sources, in terms of where we got our information from, could be counted on a hand. It was either the newspaper and there was only two or three newspapers available to you here in Australia. It was television, radio, and possibly books, and of course, word of mouth, or via the telephone. So not very many sources of information. But these days, in 2021, we have a plethora 
of sources of information. So much so that we have at least a billion websites available for us to source information. We have hundreds of, and th of thousands of social networks. Uh, we have more people choosing themselves. And what does this mean? What does choosing yourself mean? It basically means doing what I am doing. So rather than listen to stuff that other people are coming up with, to listening to the various media reports which are infested and infected with the various leftist narratives, I choose to back myself and be my own channel of information where I take book summaries, for example, and summarize them and deliver them myself. So rather than listening to a foray of uh, world events that have been shaped and manipulated by other people's narratives, what I do is I focus on material that is a little bit more serious, that has a little bit more depth and backing in terms of books, other people's experience and read those, um, deliver those, think about, about those, reflect on those and use that as a source of information that I can use to then leverage and reflect and make sense of the world around me. So the fact is that we are surrounded by bit streams and bit streams are digital wells of information, um, pieces of information that, is, that have been digitized and they are immortal. Uh, once something is digitized, once something is put onto the internet, it basically takes on a life of, of its own and have, has a lifetime of its own. Who knows? Who knows how long and how relevant these 5am clubs are going to be that I'm putting together and publishing. In a thousand years time, there may be somebody who may be listening and wondering what it was like to live in 2020. And I have documented a whole year of my life with Jim's 5am clubs, where I showcase the, and highlight the beauty of this environment around us day by day, so that people can see what it was like. And I overlay it with a message, with a message of empowerment that I've taken from, a, from OPE, which is other people's experience be it a book summary, be it a, uh, an experience that I've had, but something which has a foundation. So it's important to understand that unlike papyrus uh, and, and, and blocks and templates that can wear down, vlogs, blogs, uh, internet never wears down. But we are un we are all subject and uh, we are, I guess to a certain extent, overwhelmed and, cr and we are crumbling under the weight of its ubiquitous availability. As I say, I'm going live now. I've got the technology to go live. I'm up here on the mid-north coast at Berube Point. And just in front of me, just so you, you're aware, right there is a, a, a pool called the Champagne Bath, where you can come and sit in there and get mixed around and splashed by the ocean swell. But it's a beautiful place to be. But I can be here live in real time presenting an item of news in a vlog and it is available not only to my family and friends 
who live in Sydney, but it's available across the continent and across the world. There are people in Greece who will be watching this and vicariously living and experiencing what I am experiencing at the moment real time. So the next point that the author talks about is that our inboxes are an intermediary, not a destination. So one of the big challenges that everybody faces with internet, with, the, with email, is if you look at your email at any point in time, there generally is a number of emails that have not been accessed, read, or processed, which creates enormous pressure and stress on each and every one of us. I remember working in a top tier law firm and just being inundated with hundreds of emails every single day. And to get on top of it would be a full-time job. All you had to do is just read emails from morning till night. But the stupid thing was that everybody was expected to be reading their emails and to be on top of it. But the reality is it was virtually impossible to do. So what happens deep down is that when you look at your email account and see unread emails, all of those emails um, um, are digging at you throughout the day. They're impacting your conscious and subconscious and putting enormous pressure on you. Because humans are teleological in nature, they want to be able to sort things out, fix things as soon as they come into our brain. The fact that we have thousands of things coming towards us at the one time, all needing our attention. So it's not as if you can just turn your back on it and just ignore it. You need to act on it and do something about it. All of these things niggle at us throughout the day and cause us discomfort, cause us stress, cause us pain. And in many people, it causes suffering that they will only realize years later. So the trick, according to this author, is that in your email account, you take your inbox and you must process all of your emails based on their context and, uh, and put them and put them into another folder. So you need to get them out of your inbox and do something immediately with them. Delete it. If it takes less than two minutes to action, then action it or delegate it to somebody else or put it into another folder, which will be your to-do list. But you need to empty your email inbox, according to this author, and put them where they need to be. Or to do it in batches, once a day, once, twice a day, but not to be sitting there being distracted continuously throughout the day, because that is overwhelming. So, uh, and to be careful that the brain can get overwhelmed and you can get paralyzed. You can be at home sleeping and your mind will be thinking constantly about all of the emails that have been unprocessed and are clogging up your inbox. So do yourself a favor and clear out that inbox as often and as effectively as you can. The other thing that the author talks about, the second formal point to come out of this book summary, is that, uh, let me turn the car off, is that uh, you need to know why the why for every single piece of media you choose to consume. I'm very fortunate that I've been able to uh, um, stop um, being connected to various forms of information. Um, you only need a small handful of sources which you read regularly. Um, the source of info information that you bank on the sort of sources that I use are books, uh, of course, the Bible, but uh, other books, 
I don't have the time these days to read many books from cover to cover. So what I choose to do is I choose to focus on book summaries. And not only do I focus on the book summaries, but I incorporate them on a daily basis into my gym's 5am club. So I summarise the book summary. I present it and I teach it so I can, I can that way um, learn it better. Um, I also watch a few videos. I create videos. I read some vlogs and blogs. But I don't waste, I do not waste my time watching the news on television. I spend little time watching television and don't listen to much radio because all of those sources are a complete waste of time because they, as I said before, they've been infected by leftist views and they overcomplicate, they overthink and they over um, step their mark when they are reporting and just create fear, uncertainty and doubt. So I'll chat to my stockbroker on a daily basis, uh, business days that is, and uh, I'll, um, I'll do my own research rather than waste my time listening to the crap that is being foisted in our direction. The last point that we need to uh, focus on in this digitized world, and the, a very, very important point that the author puts forward, is that if you want to communicate with people around you, if you want to capture their attention, and if you want to remain relevant and for people to want to listen, to want to use your material, you need to be effective in what you do by front loading your messaging. And front loading your messaging and your communication basically means that you need to get straight to the point. Don't waste your time with foreplay. Don't waste your time with uh, uh, tiptoeing around the uh, situation. You need to be direct and straight to the point in order for people to want to shop with you and to uh, deal with you. Um, with your messaging and your content. So the way we do it is we get straight to the point and front load the communication with what you want, why you want it. So you do the uh, who, what, where, when, why. Very, very important. And then you back, you back end your message with support information. So you order your information that you provide the people around you with most important to least important. So gone are the days where you start with the um, small talk and you slowly build to the, uh, um, to the climax and then finish up with a conclusion. I guess these days you need to start with the conclusion, hit the climax and then um, don't even bother with the rest. Because you need to sort it and deal with it because that's the way of the new world because we are time poor because we are inundated with lots and lots of information uh, and we are competing with every other source of information for people's attention um, and it gets to the point where sometimes you're just not going to get through to anybody anymore unless you're one-on-one -on -one and you're able to uh, at least, um, I guess, have a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You need to have a certain charisma to break through these days. And a lot of people are losing that charisma because they're being disrupted by fear, uncertainty and doubt. Because it's the fear meister. The fear meisters these days, the people who create uncertainty and doubt are the ones that capture people's attention, unfortunately. Um, so uh, be, be careful, be cautious of that because people will uh, front end their messaging with shock, fear, uncertainty and doubt to capture your attention and then just take you on a, a meandering bullshit sort of walk to, no, to nowhere with their uh, conspiracy theories. So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me on this different episode of Jim's 5am Club where I come to you from the vehicle 
up here at Barubi Point on this winter's morning where you can see the surf pounding through. And as I said, it's windy out there. The rain has stopped, but I'm guess this afternoon is going to be uh, quite vicious. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable. And let's become a bit literate. Um, and to understand that we are living in a world where we're overwhelmed with disruptive messaging. And to understand that whatever you write, whatever you capture digitally, will be here forever, potentially. So I encourage you to follow my lead. A lead that has enabled me to become a master in my field and to make this niche something that uh, I hope to be able to pass on to others and to encourage others to uh, get involved and to become vloggers, to have their own 5am club or whatever they want to name it, but to leave their mark, to leave their legacy and to make their lives interesting by capturing their experiences. Each of us have a wisdom which is unique to us. We have grown up in wonderful families. We've been surrounded by great leaders. We've had parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts. We've lived a whole spectrum of experiences. People getting married, people getting divorced, children being born, christenings, you name it. We've traveled the world. We've just got so many more perspectives than what previous generations had. And we need to be in a position to share it because we all can be partners in each other's development, growth and development, and to become interdependent, where we give and take from each other, so that we can be the wind beneath our wings. We can help each other get through the morning, get through the day, get through our challenges. We can live, learn and pass it on. We can be the strong link that binds together the chain of the past, the long chain, the long cultural, spiritual chain that has come before us with all those wonderful people where we respect our elders past and present and we're able then to leverage all of that and pass it on to our children and our grandchildren to link the previous two generations to the next two, to be the magic glue that makes a big difference, especially in today's world when people are less connected or less re uh, um, relevantly collect connected. We may be connected electronically, but in terms of the true connection and the true friendship and the true camaraderie that we have between each other, I dare say, I could be wrong, but it's much, much less than that what I would observed from my parents and my family growing up. So take care, everybody. Yasas, have a good rest of the day. And thank you for bearing with me. I do t tend to chat on, but it's because it's so interesting and it's so important to get the, the, the message through and to be effective in the message rather than to be efficient. So take care and we'll chat again. Yasas, filakia from Jim's 5am Club and bye for now.